Uh, take your Bible, turn the book of Daniel, and I mean it. I had uh, I kind of worked on this a little bit, and uh, I got alone with God again this afternoon, and God gave me something different to talk about. So we're going we we've been t- just laying out doctrine things. Who is God? Who is Jesus? And so I thought I'd talk about maybe the second coming just a little bit. And Daniel 2 turned into this teaching on Christ being the rock. And um, when you understand this thing, this will hold you. And I mean it. We are not holding ourselves. Okay? We're not hanging on the outside of the ark hoping we don't let go. We are in the ark. We are in Christ. And as the water rises, let it rise. Because that's the higher we, the more it rises, the higher we go. Amen? So the book of Daniel chapter 2, not going to read all of it. We got a lot of prayer requests. Uh, Sweetie Pie is in the house tonight. And uh, I'm finding out some things about me is that I'm a mess without my wife in more ways than one and um, I tell you it's I, I love what God is doing in her um I'm not going to give you all the details now, but we go see a cancer doctor tomorrow. He's going to decide whether to go ahead and do chemo sabi, <laughs> chemotherapy. Yes, sir. Woo! Amen. 24th. If nothing happens, well, don't do nothing. Amen. And uh, so tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, we go find that out. But um, I tell you what, God's God's grace is good. Amen. As as low as I was feeling yesterday, I'm about that high today. And I like it. And it's the word of God. And it's what I'm going to show you tonight. So I better get into it. Daniel chapter two, verse thirty one. The setup is, you know, the story. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And when he woke up, he knew he had a dream, but he could not remember the dream, and he didn't know the interpretation of it, but he knew he had it. So he calls out to all of his occult guys, okay? And they can't figure it. He says, you tell me the dream. And they said, oh, king, no king's ever asked. You can't ask us to do that. The king said, oh, yes, I can. And if you don't tell me the dream, then I'll know that everything you said before, before this day has been a bold-faced lie, and I'm going to cut your head off. He's dead serious about it, too. Dan, listen to this now. You've got four on one side. The Chaldeans, astrologers, soothsayers, and something else. They can't, they're not sufficient. This world is not sufficient for you. It will not help you. You've got Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the other four. Daniel's going to pray and say, God, we'd just soon keep our heads for a little while. But our heads are yours. You do whatever you want with it. But show us the dream. And God gave Daniel the dream. Now, think about that. To know what happened inside somebody else's mind is a miracle. So he's going to explain the dream. Daniel 2, verse 31. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold. Now we know that was Nebuchadnezzar and his kingdom, Babylonian Empire. His breast and arms of silver. Well, we know that that was the Medo-Persian Empire that followed. His belly and thighs of brass. We know then that that was the uh, Grecian Empire that took over. 
Then uh, verse 34, thou sawest till that a st- uh, th- 33, excuse me, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron, part of clay. The iron was the Roman Empire. The feet still hasn't happened yet. That fourth kingdom still has not shaped up yet. And I'm not going to say much about that tonight. The focus is on what happens afterward. And I want you to think of these ten toes. Ten is the number for dominion. When you stand, God told Joshua, every place that the soles of your feet touch, I'm going to give that to you. That's your, that's your land. All through the Bible, God tells us to stand. Dominion. Okay, God gave you authority. He gave you dominion over certain areas of life. So this image has great dominion. And it's going to have great dominion over the whole world. It's going to take over everything. Well, I wish I could talk about that. Maybe I'll talk about it later. But it's going to take over literally everything. Nothing will escape it. But then, verse 34. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands which smote the image upon his feet. Why the feet? You go after the feet, the rest of the image, boom. Everything hinges on that last kingdom. And that's why he goes for the feet. See, Christ is that stone. Ten in the Bible. Ten Commandments, the law. The law is what gives the beast his power in the last days. Because people are breaking the law. They're going to break the law. And because of that, God puts everybody under cruel authority. So, because of that, because of those ten toes, the stone goes and destroys. When Christ died on the cross, he destroyed the power of the law against us. The law does not condemn us any longer. Somebody say amen. Amen. We are not, I mean, we sang songs tonight that I just wanted to shout, dance, and do cartwheels. Then I ended up at the hospital. Because when when you think about the grace of God applied to your sins because of the cross, you are no longer guilty of what you've done. Okay? In fact, boy, here I am already. Turn to Revelation 17. I'll show it to you. Revelation 17. This stone is important. This stone is Christ. And, I mean, this, there's multitudes of teaching about the stone. In Revelation 17, he's describing the beast, seven heads, ten horns. The ten horns are those ten toes. And they represent ten kings. Look at verse 12. The ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received... See, ten is for dominion. The law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. That's Romans 7. So, the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Watch this, verse 14. Look what happens. These shall make war with the Lamb. Bad, bad mistake. Big mistake. Because the Lamb shall overcome them. Woo! Amen! The power of the law against us has now been destroyed by the Lamb, who is also the rock and also the stone cut out without hands. Now explain what that means in a minute. Back in Daniel chapter 2, Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron, iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, just <laughs> gone. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. 
Father, bless your people tonight. Bless them like you blessed me tonight. Give us wisdom tonight. Show us the greatness, the power of the lamb and the stone and how it is the foundation and the crushing stone and the grinding stone and the stone of stumbling and the rock of offense and the stones that make up the temple. And Father, just te give, give us wise things, Father, that'll help us, that'll carry us through our hardships in our life. Father, we can't do this without you. There's no way in the world we'll make it in this world without you. We, we've already got it figured out. No way we can do it. So, Father, we are... Hide us. Hide us in the ark. So the devils can't get us. Bless your people tonight. Bless those, Lord, who need help tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now, what does it mean the stone was cut out without hands? Think of a quarry. Okay? When they're going to when they're going to build something, this quarry over here, when they're going to build something, they use rocks. They use stone. Back in, back in old days, they would cut out big stones. These monoliths all over the world, you ain't telling me, you're not telling me that ancient man who barely knew how to rub two sticks together to make a fire could move 1,000 ton quarried stones. You're not telling me that, that man could do that, okay? That was some kind of giant power. I, ain't, I, ain't, I, don't, I don't understand it, but that was not man. Do you understand a quarry? When they build a building, those, those buildings were built with the hands of men. This church, I love this church building. Don't want anything ever to happen to it. Amen? Amen. So we treat this building with some respect here. But if we lost this building, we didn't lose our salvation. Our salvation is not made with the hands of men. And our stone was not cut out with the hands of men. Man did not invent Jesus Christ. That's what that means. Okay, let me show it to you. Turn, you get your Bible, get it ready. Daniel 2.44. He gives the interpretation of what, this, of what this stone is. And he says, In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Now he's telling you who the stone is. The God of heaven. Who's the God of heaven? Jesus Christ. Which shall never be destroyed. Never be destroyed. You hang on to that. No, you let, you let God nail that in your heart. His kingdom will never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Now, I'm, I'm, I, I, my mind is just running a million places. But I mentioned a stone, the largest quarried stone in the world is at Baalbek, Lebanon. Look this up. It's still sitting there. They quarried it and it's still sitting there. And you can, you can put 50 people standing on top of this thing lengthwise. Weighs over a thousand tons. They don't know how they quarried it or how they moved it. But it was intended to be part of the, the foundation wall of the city of Baalbek. Remember when the 12 spies went into Canaan land? They said the walls were very great. And that's what, that's what convinced them that they, the 10 of them couldn't go in. They said, we, we saw those stones. There's no way in the world we're going in there. That stone, Wayne, is left as a monument that their kingdom fell. That stone, is, it's quarried, but it's just, it's just sitting there. And nobody knows how to move it. You could not get, you'd have to break it up in pieces, get it out of the way. Their, their kingdom fell. Ours is going to, has, stand, has already stood forever and will stand forever. Amen. Amen. Now turn to Deuteronomy 32. We're going to look at this stone. We're going to study the rock, the stone. Mm. Man, you get a hold of this thing. Your, your salvation's intact. If it's built upon the rock. And the rock is not the Pope. And it's not the federal government. It's not 
It's Christ and the Word of God. Deuteronomy 32, verse 30. How should... Moses is asking these Israelites, when they fought these battles and all of their enemies fled before them, he said, how should one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight except their rock, capital R, had sold them and the Lord had shut them up. And he's talking about the enemies. How is it that one of you guys went out against a thousand men and a thousand men went running screaming away if it hadn't been for the rock that put, it, put fear in their minds and hearts and they fled? Remember in the days of Gideon? 300 men. 300 men. And they didn't even fight. They just lit the light, broke the lanterns, lit the light, said the sword of the Lord and Gideon. Thousands of, of them fled. They ran off. Left all their stuff there. How can that happen except the Lord put them to flight? The rock did that. Capital R had sold them and the Lord had shut them up. Now look at verse 31. For their rock, little r, is not as our rock, capital R. And I'll show you why. Their rock was chiseled. They made a God out of their own minds and their own wicked heart. They said in their mind, well, the God that I have doesn't mind me committing my sins. The God that I have doesn't mind me being this kind of sinner or that kind of sinner or whatever. That's my God. You carve that God out. And their rock is not like our rock. Our rock was not carved with the hands of man. Man did not invent Christ. Christ invented us the other way around. And he said, their rock is not as our rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges, even our enemies know that. Let me tell you about the battle that's going on in Kenya. While Michael was there, they shut our radio stations down, both of them. Boom, pulled the plug. They hate us. There's elements over there that hate us. And they're afraid of what I'm saying. I'm not saying anything but this. And they shut us down. Michael had to work to get it back. And they, they made up some kind of excuse. You don't have enough local content. I'm telling you, it's a battle. It is a battle. They, they know that what we have is not like what they have. They themselves know it. Okay? Even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is the vine of Sodom in the fields of Gomorrah. The grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons, the cruel venom of asps. And he said in verse 34, Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? You know what his treasures are? The Bible. You want treasures? You want something that will bless you? Put your head in your Bible and start reading it. You'll find treasure. You'll find little nuggets of gold and silver and precious jewels in there. And you'll just go, oh, look at what I found. Oh, this is amazing. And then you'll start weeping because you'll remember your sins. And you'll say, God, why did you show me this? Because this is what I do for the people that are inside the ark that have my grace on them. This is what I do for my, my children. I, I, op I unseal the treasures for all my children. Amen. He said, it's not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures. Now look at Habakkuk. This may be the first time you've ever turned your Bible to Habakkuk, but turn your Bible to Habakkuk. <laughs> David, uh, David, um, I oh, can't remember his name. It ain't David Taylor, I know that. David Gibbs of Christian Law Association said he bought his son a brand new Bible for Christmas. King James Bible, bought it for, to him for Christmas. A month later, his son comes back and said, Dad, this got... A page missing out of it. It's, oh no, son. It, 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 you know how the new Bibles are when they put that gilding, that gold gilding on the edges, you know. He said, just take them and just kind of give them a little pull like that. And what it is, you'll, you'll find out you got two pages stuck together. And he said, no, dad. He said, I've already done that. I got a page missing out of my Bible. You know where it was? Habakkuk. Now how, some, some people would go all their lifetime not know they had a page missing out of the book of Habakkuk. Read it. Habakkuk 2.19. Woe them that saith to the wood, 
awake. This is a piece of wood. Oh, this is my God. Awake now, God. Speak to me. I don't hear anything. You know why? It's a stick. This is not God. Woe to him that says to the wood, awake to the dumb stone. Dumb. You know what dumb literally means? Huh? Can't talk. Psalm says they have ears, but they cannot hear. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have legs, but somebody's got to move them and carry them around. They can't walk. They have arms, but they cannot save. So they that make them and worship them are like unto them. Awake to the, awake to the dumb stone. Arise. It shall teach. You're talking to a rock. You're talking to a piece of carved image that somebody quarried out of a quarry somewhere and a guy chiseled out this great piece of art and they said, that's Mary. Or that's, that's Buddha. Or that's whatever. No, it's not. It's a rock. A dumb rock. It'll never talk to you. It'll never speak to you. Our rock does. It shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver. There's no breath at all in the midst of it. You'll pray to that dumb idol your whole life and never hear, never get inspiration out of it. But you read a Bible. Your eyes will pop open. See the difference in the stone? The stone cut out without hands is Christ because man does not make Jesus. We did not invent Christ. He is, in fact, here, here it is. Look at Hebrews. Go to Hebrews. Hurry up. We went to the doctor's office today and that doctor was so nice and kind to us that he allowed me to sit down and read through the book of Hebrews twice. <laughs> Waiting on him to show up. Hebrews 9, 11, But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with what? Hands. That is to say, not of this building. Now, look at this. Not of this building and not of this building. This is corrupt. It's going to rot, corrupt. It's full of corruption. Amen? Verse 24, for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. He is the stone cut out without man doing it. That's how he will prevail. Always. He will always prevail. He will never. He destroys our enemies. Always. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. He, Brian, he is standing in our place. If you tell me you've seen God, I'll call you a liar to your face. You cannot see God. We cannot approach him. God showed up at Mount Sinai to Israel and it was so terrible that the Israelites told Moses tell him quit don't talk no more his voice was so terrible to them that they were gonna die it was, they were gonna have a heart attack they were gonna lose it so they said Moses you go stand in our place for us and that's where Christ is right now for us for every one of us he is standing for us in our place because he's the one that has the right to, because he has no sin, and he was not cut out with the hands of man. Now, my wife handed me a magazine the other day on how to eat. I don't need a magazine on how to eat, Wayne. It says eating well. Don't need, a, don't need instruction manual. I found my mouth a long time ago. But it's got multitudes of articles in there on CRISPR. 
CRISPR is gene editing. And it's what it's going to be. God made this temple, this house. God built this. Amen. Did he build it how he wanted it? Obviously. He built it exactly the way he wanted it. It is not for us to rebuild it. Is not for us. People, I'm warning you, it's coming. And I mean, I get shaky scared over this because it's coming. Christ has not entered into holy places made with hands. You keep that in your, you let God nail that in your heart so that God holds on to you. Because you won't be able to hold on to yourself. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5. Look at this. Boy, this Bible. This Bible, people. If you want revival, read your Bible. Have a Bible revival. 2 Corinthians 5. Well, this is true. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with what? Hands eternal in the heavens. When we lose this life, we're going to gain the better one. Verse 2. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. I, I, I'm ready. If so be that being clothed we should not be found naked. For, that, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Putting the people in the ark, saving their life. While everybody else perishes, my friends. And it's a house not made with hands. Mark 14. Look at what they accused him of. Mark 14. Verse 58. It's a long chapter. Verse 57 says, There arose certain and bare false witness against them, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. And within three days I will build another made without hands. Was he telling the truth? Yes! He's telling the truth! <laughs> destroy this temple. And in three days, I'll raise it up again. And he did. Amen. Just like he said. Whew. The temple that they showed him is gone. It doesn't exist. There's a part of a wall left, and that's it. Colossians. Colossians 2. Turn there. The Old Testament, you were circumcised by the hands of a man. The New Testament, you're not. Colossians 2.11, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Christ is the high priest who tears off this old body and discards it, throws it away. I don't want it. Amen? There's nothing here I want to take to heaven with me. Don't anything do I, I'm, I want to be out. Mm -mm, but it's made without hands. It's not religion that remakes a man or remakes a person. 
It is the power of the Word of God and the grace of God and the cross and having it built on the rock. Mm, mm, mm. 1 Corinthians 10. Turn there. Boy, I'm glad, God, I'm glad God got a hold of me. It's good to get along with God. Amen. I did. I told Lisa, I said, I'm going to go get along with God. And this is what happened. Whew. 1 Corinthians 10, moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. This is why you need to keep reading your Bible. You read it, every now and then you ignore it. So that makes you ignorant. So go back, read it again, quit being ignorant. I would not that you should be ignorant. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat. What was he talking about? The manna? Where did it come from? Heaven. That showed up in the 66th chapter of the Bible, Exodus 16. Came right, they ate food that literally came down from heaven. Literally, the, the, the Psalms says it was angels' food. It's the same thing angels ate. I can't wait to see that. I can't, I'm going, can, can I? And God just says, here, eat this. Okay, I'll do it. But it, did all eat the same spiritual meat? Did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock. There it is, capital R, that followed them. Now, I don't know, there's something I don't know. And since the Bible doesn't say it, God says it's not a big deal. But according to this, everywhere that the Israelites camped, there was a water that came out of a rock for them. According to that, they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. Now, is it that the same stone that Moses smote literally showed up every place they camped. I don't know. Or was it that it was a different rock that Christ appeared in and gave them? I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us, so it doesn't matter. But according to this, you, you listen to this now in case you get out there in the wilderness and think you don't have anything to survive on. The rock always followed them. Wherever they camped, the rock was there pouring water out of it. That's what that says. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. You see, it's like I've said, all in the Old Testament, he's veiled. He's there. But without the New Testament, you don't know how to spot him. He's a rock. He's a lamb. He's a high priest. He's a stone. He is a rod. He is a tree. He is a star. I mean, how many places do you find Christ now that you know how to look for him in the Old Testament? He's everywhere in there. Okay? Whew. That rock was Christ. Now, let's look at that story. Turn to Exodus 17. I'm here to help you with your salvation tonight. Who in here needs help with their salvation? That's us. We need help. I'm here to tell you, God don't leave you. Ever. Ever. If you ever left us, we'd be consumed in a... Exodus 17, verse 1. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin, which is Sinai, after their journeys, according to the commandment of the Lord, and pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses, and said, Give us water that we may drink. Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? 
The people thirsted there for water. You ever been there? You ever been there? I have. I've been there. Thirsty. Need water. And you start murmuring to God. God, why did you leave me all the way out here to just leave me? God, why did you do that? So, verse 3, And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? Moses cried unto the Lord. I've been doing a lot of that lately. Crying unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They'd be almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee the elders of Israel and thy rod. See, that's Christ. And thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thine hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it. Why did he smite the rock? What's the, what's the symbol? Why did Moses have to take his rod and smite the rock? I was going to put this in my notes and I forgot all about it. Turn to who knows why. Anybody want to take a, just a flying leap? Guess. Huh? Turn to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. That rock is Christ. And here's what happened. When you get a hold of what was done for you by your Savior, you get happy in the Lord. Isaiah 53, Who hath believed our report, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him, what? Stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. And he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That's why Moses smote the rock. The rock was Christ, and in order, the, the water is the water of salvation, the water of life, which is given to every man freely, free of charge, free of good works, but by faith. Christ was on the cross smitten. Remember when they took, and took the thorns and made that crown? How'd they put that on? How'd they place that on his head? Smote him with a rod. They took a rod and smote it, tapped it down on his head, literally jamming those thorns down into his flesh. And that crown of thorns was our sin. Laid upon the head of the one Savior, the one rock. There can only be one Savior. Amen. Thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massah and Meribah, because of the chiding of the children of Israel. Because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? I've been there. I've been in that place where I've said, is the Lord among us or not? And God always shows up. Always. Even when we complain. Doesn't He? Even when we complain. He always shows up. Whew. Psalm 8, 118. You may, I, I'm either going to run out of notes or you're going to get up and walk out for too long. But I'm enjoying, I need this. When I am at my worst, 
I want to be in the Word of God. And I want to be a blessing. Psalm 118, verse 22. The stone which the builders refused is become the head stone of the corner. Now, watch out now. This is not a capstone on a pyramid. That's not what that is. In the NIV, you know they've changed it. They snuck it out of there. The earlier NIVs changed this and translated it as the capstone. They later revised it and, and snuck it out of there. So you don't find it in there anymore. You can check... Some of you online go to blueletterbible.org. I don't, I don't think that it's in the NIV anymore, but it used to be. They used to have it as the capstone. The capstone is what tops the pyramid. Pyramid is not Christ. That's a building made with hands. Okay? But he's the, he's the headstone of the corner. When you're going to lay that building out, you've got to have a stone at the corner to know where to lay the other stones and it's got to be 90 degrees it's got to be because if you don't if you don't have it trued it'll be cattywampus which means that building is not going to stay up very long it's not square it's not plumb it ain't right Okay, so you've got a stone now. It's 90 degrees exactly. When man gets a hold of it, he changes it, alters it. One degree off at the beginning doesn't sound like much. But at the end of 100 feet, how far off are you? A lot. So they looked at Christ and they rejected him. They said, he is not our cornerstone. They've all looked at this Bible, brethren, and they've rejected it. And they said, it is not the King James. It's not, this is not our cornerstone. We've got a better one. A zigzag one. But they rejected it. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Verse 14. He shall be for a sanctuary. How many of you needed a sanctuary? You know what that is? It's a place where they can't get you. It's a place where there's water and food and comfort for you. He shall be for a sanctuary. He, Christ is. But for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both houses of Israel, they were offended at Christ's doctrine, they ended up hating him for what he said. Part of what he said was, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And they hated him for that. They hated him for his doctrine. They hated him for what he said because he said, I'm the son of God. And they hated him for it. And the Jews to this day hate him. They hate him. They have rejected that. It's, he has become a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. And what happened? Here's what happened. Remember that, that parable of the seed and the sower? And that seed is sown on stony ground. What happens to somebody is they start hearing a little bit of the Bible. Oh, I want that. And they come in, they sit for a while. And then something gets preached, something gets said to them out of the Word of God, and they get offended. And they snap out. They said, I'm not going to hear that. I don't believe that. I'm not going to hear it. I'm not going to listen to it. And they snap out. And they're gone. 
They got offended. See, this rock that we have offends people. Does it not? Don't give me that Bible stuff. That Bible's cruel and it's got things in it against sodomites and it's got things in it against this and things against that and we don't like that. That's not politically correct anymore. You can't say things like that anymore. They get offended at it. So the stone is a stone of stumbling and it's intended to be that way. People, I've learned, I hate it. But people get offended easily and it's in every generation and it's for a gin and a snare a gin is like is where the word engine comes from and it's literally a handmade hand built who was it brother george told me the difference between a gin and a snare a, 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 one of them is a gin, I think, is where you bait a trap and draw the creature to your trap. A snare, is you find his path and lay it in his path, he'll step in it every time. And that's how people are. You get people figured out and you understand that there's certain things that if you say to them from the Word of God, it's going to cross their path. They're going to get offended at it. And it's a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Now, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. You see, God's disciples never get offended at this book. Never get offended. They read it. They know it's, God's got to say things that we don't want to hear. But he has to say them because he loves us. Okay? And we don't get offended. But this Bible is an offense to a lot of people now. Turn to Acts chapter 4. Boy, I need this. I need this. Acts chapter 4. Look at verse 8. We'll start there. Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. If Peter's filled with the Holy Ghost, you better watch out. He's going to tear you up. Said unto them, you rulers and people and the elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means is he made whole? Now you listen to me. We're being, we're being so tortured in Kenya. The day that Lisa was having surgery, we did our feeding. Fed 450 families for a week. Seven old ladies got saved. A government official showed up and he said, I'm going to shut this all down. How stupid is that? We're out there feeding starving people, Brian. Government official shows up. Who sent him? Who sent him? He said, I'm going to shut it down. You're feeding them food that's not fit for human consumption. And Michael said, we bought it at that store over there where they're selling it for everybody. <laughs> Michael makes a phone call. He knows some people. And he called some, I'm not going to say it, but he called somebody and all of a sudden this guy, you know what they wanted? They said, you buy the food and the, we, the government, will hand it out to these people. You look back here at this. Verse 9, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole? We were feeding people. And they hated us for it. They hated us for it. Be it known, verse 10, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, boy, he's bold. Peter's letting them have, you crucified him. Whom God raised from the dead. You crucified him, but it didn't work. You thought you killed him. Uh-uh. He got back up. He's Captain America. And he says, I can do this all day long. Amen. Whew. 
He said, even by him did this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders. And we're hated over there because of this Bible. They hate this Bible. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And boy, we are getting bloodied and battered and bruised because of it. And I'll be honest with you, it's been hard to take. It's been so hard to take. But as long as God gives us grace to do it, how could we do it except we be built on the rock. Amen? Let me read this and we'll go to prayer. Isaiah 28. Whew. Isaiah 28, 16, 17. Isaiah 28 is where he identifies the drunkards of Ephraim. The false doctrine people, the drunks. The uh, mega churches and their hellish doctrines. Isaiah 28, 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone. And that means that it's been 90 degreed out. It's been tried and trued. It's been measured and it's perfect. And this Bible is the tried stone. It's been measured repeatedly. It's passed every test. And it's right in everything it says. And it's, pre it's a precious cornerstone. I'll die for my Bible. I'll die for my Bible. It's precious to me. It is a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet. Levels, plumb bobs. God tries and squares the stone. He's talking about his lines. His, he's talking about perfection. Plumb bobs. Never lie. Bubbles in a level. Never lie. Ever. Neither does this stone. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. So listen to me. I'm going to close out with this. A refuge of lies is you lying about your own sin. You trying to cover up and lie about your own sin. And God says, I'm going to send a hailstorm down and it's going to sweep away your refuge of lies. I'm going to show everybody who you are and what you're made of and what you did. So your best, your best place to be on the stone because he's going to win. Amen.